I just built a complete Roblox game without having to write one single line of code. And the craziest part, I used only AI to do everything. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I created a fully functional zombie survival game in Roblox from scratch, all without any coding knowledge. You'll see the entire process from idea to launch, including how I designed environments, created game mechanics, and implemented player interactions. This isn't just some basic game either. We're talking about a professional Roblox experience with all the features players expect from popular games on the platform. I'll walk you through every step of the process so you can replicate the success with your own game ideas. So whether you're a complete beginner or someone who's tried Roblox Studio before, AI changes everything about what's possible. I'll show you how to use AI tools to design your environments and characters, implement game mechanics without coding, and test and launch your game on the Roblox platform. The Roblox game development market is massive and until now you needed serious development skills to compete. But what if I told you that's completely changed? What if AI could level the playing field and let anyone build impressive Roblox games? Alright, so let me show you how. So before we dive in, here's something good to nail about Roblox Studio. It's actually way easier to build in than engines like Unity or Unreal. A lot of the basics are already streamlined for you, which makes the whole process a lot less intimidating. That said, it's not perfect. The way objects are organized can feel a bit chaotic sometimes, and managing the hierarchy isn't the most intuitive. Plus, since everything you make stays within the Roblox platform, you might run into some limitations depending on the type of game you're trying to build. Alright, so let's get started. First, you'll want to download Roblox Studio and create an account if you don't already have one. Once you're logged in, head over to the Home section. From there, scroll through the templates and look to the one called Suburban. Click on it to open, and now we've got a starting point. We're using this specific template because it already gives us a solid, good-looking community setup. It's complete with roads and trees and some basic terrain. So instead of like having to start totally from scratch, we're building on top of a world that already feels alive. And from here, we'll start adding new buildings, more assets, and customize the space to make it our own. Once the base template is loaded, the first thing we're going to do is bring the environment to life by adding some buildings. And to do that, head on over to the toolbox window here in the lower right corner. This is where you can search for different building assets. Then drag any buildings you like straight into the scene. As you start placing them, try to enclose the space just a little bit more. Make it feel like a real neighborhood. And in our build, we mixed it up a little. We added different houses, some buildings and styles based on B section of the city. So don't be afraid to get creative with the layout. Click heads up though, the more assets you bring in, the heavier the game becomes. That means longer loading times for players, so it's always a balance between aesthetics and performance. Once the buildings are in place, the next step is to edit the terrain beneath them to make everything blend together. This is where we start using the terrain editor. Click on it, then select paint. Choose a material that fits your scene, but here we're going to use concrete. You can adjust the brush size to make your edits more precise, then start painting the base areas under each building. Take your time with this part, making sure the terrain looks consistent does help the whole map feel more polished and natural. Now that we've got a bunch of buildings and updated terrain, it's a good idea to organize the workspace so it doesn't get too overwhelming later on. So open up the explorer paddle, create a new folder, and name it something like external assets for example. Then just select all the buildings and assets you added earlier and then drag them into this folder. It doesn't affect how anything looks in-game, but trust me, it makes things way easier to manage once your project starts getting bigger. Now that the environment's looking pretty solid, let's move on to something a bit more exciting. Setting up the zombies and where they're going to spot. So to start, we're going to create a new folder to keep things organized. Let's name this one Zombie Spawn. This is where all these spawn-related elements will live. Next up, we're going to use parts right here, which are basically the default building blocks in Roblox. You can use them for a ton of different things, but in this case, they'll serve as the base where our zombies spawn. To add one, go up to the Home tab and click on Parts. That'll drop a basic block right into the scene. Zoom in and adjust the size however you like. We're going to make it bigger so there's enough room for a zombie to appear on top. Now here's a quick tip. You can use the number keys to switch between transform tools. One for select, two for move, three for scale, and four for rotate. These transform tools can be manipulated via the gizmo provided. Then adjust parts position and scale. Once it's the size that you want, rename it to spawn point and then drag it into the zombie spawn folder we made earlier to keep everything grouped nicely. And go ahead and duplicate that as many times as you need and scatter them around the scene. The more variation you have in their locations, the better zombie coverage you'll get during gameplay. 
Now with all these spawn points in place, we're ready to add functionality. And for that, we're gonna use Copilot. So open it up and give it this prompt. Please write me a script for a Roblox game. Please create a zombie spawner script. Whereas zombies are spawned every wave on specific parts. Make the logic dynamic increase the spawned amount of zombies per wave. The parts where the zombie is spawned is called a spawn point. Both that and this script is inside the zombie spawn folder that's inside a workspace. The zombie to be spawned is Roblox's drooling zombie asset that is inside the replicated storage folder. Now one thing to really keep in mind here, when prompting Copilot, you have to be very specific. Copilot can't actually see your project structure, so if you're vague, it'll just make assumptions. Giving it exact names, exact folder locations, and exact asset references saves you a lot of back and forth, and also minimizes the need to edit the script manually afterward. Once Copilot gives you the script, we're going to bring it into the project. Head on over to Explore, select the Zombie Spawn folder, then create a new script. Open it up and paste in the script Copilot just gave us. The last step for this section, we need the zombie itself. So go back to the toolbox, search for Drooling Zombie, and once you find it, drag the asset straight into the replicated storage folder in the Explorer. That way, it's stored in the right place and ready to be spawned by the script when the game runs. Next up, let's add a gun spawner to the game so players can pick up weapons throughout the map. We'll start by creating a new port that will serve as the spawn platform for each gun. In this case, we're using a cylinder, but you can go with any shape you like. Just drop it into the seam, then adjust the scale and size until it looks right. Once that's set, go back into the Explorer and create a new folder named Gun Spawner. Then, drag the cylinder you just made into that folder and we aim the part to Gun Platform. This is where the guns will appear during the game. Now it's time to add the actual weapons. So open up the toolbox and search for the gun models that you want to include. For this project, we're using two, a handgun and a Tommy gun. Once you've found the assets, drag both of them into the replicated storage folder in the Explorer. This makes them accessible to the script we'll be setting up shortly. Now with our assets in place, go back to the gun platform and duplicate it a few times. Spread the duplicates across different parts of the play area so players can find weapons in multiple locations. This gives the gameplay a bit more depth and ensures the guns are all clustered around one spot. Now let's add the script that controls how the guns are spawned. Select the Gun Spawner folder in the Explorer, create a new script inside of it, and open up Copilot again. Here's the prop that we're going to use. Please create a script for a gun spotter, whereas random guns from the replicated storage will be spawned on top of a specific part named Gun Platform. The script and the parts are located inside a folder called the Gun Spotter. The gun assets to be spawned are called Handgun and Tommy Gun, and they are both inside the replicated storage. Again, just like before, it's really important to be specific about the names and folder locations. Since Copilot can't actually see your project, vague instructions will only lead to confusion or broken scripts. Now once you've got the completed script from Copilot, just copy the code and paste it into the new script file you created inside the Gunspotter folder. And that's it! The gun spawner is now set up and your weapons are ready to appear throughout the map. So now let's move on to creating the main menu. The first thing players will see when they launch your game. Start by going to the Start GUI folder in the Explorer and add a new screen GUI element. Then inside of that, add a frame element. Drag the frame to the center of the screen and resize it however you like, since this will act as the base container for the rest of the UI. Go ahead and rename the Scream GUI to main menu so it's easy to identify later. With the frame in place, let's add the actual interface elements. Select the frame, then add a text button. This will be your Start Game button. Position it wherever it feels natural, Centered usually works best, and then rename it to Start Game so of course it's clear what it does. But add a text label which we'll use as the game's title. Drag that into place too and make sure it's aligned nicely. Head into the Properties panel here, update a label with your game's name, and tweak things like font, alignment, and the text size to match your style. Once that's set up, go back to the main frame and adjust the background transparency. Set it to 1, then to give everything a cleaner, more polished look, add a UI corner to each element. That'll round out the corners of the button and the title label. You can fine-tune the corner radius and the properties if you want more or less curve. From here, you can take a bit more time to customize the look, change the colors, the font, sizing, and anything else to match the vibe that you're going for. This is the first impression of your game, so it's worth spending a few extra minutes on here. Once you're happy with how it looks, it's time to make the main menu actually do something. Back in the Explore, select the Starter GUI folder and create a new script. Then open up Copilot and prompt it with us. 
Please create a script for Roblox for a main menu UI. The script is inside the starter GUI folder and the button is labeled as Start Game. Please ensure that this is the main thing that shows at the start of the game Then the game starts once the player presses the button. Copy the script Copilot gives you, paste it into the new script you created, and then give it a quick test by running the game. If everything is set up correctly, you'll see your main menu load up first, and once you click the button, the gameplay should begin. Now one thing that's missing right now is feedback for the player. We've got waves of zombie spotting, but there's no visual indicator telling the player what wave they're actually on. So let's fix that by setting up a basic wave tracker on the screen. Head on over to the starter GUI folder and create a new screen GUI. We'll name this Game UI. Under that, add a text label and call it Wave Number. Now that's the element we'll update later to show which wave is currently in progress. Next, we're going to update the Zombie Spotter script. Open up the existing script from the Zombie Spawn folder. Then go over to Copilot and give it this prompt. Please update this Roblox script. I wanted to update the wave number text label element with the current wave so the player knows what wave it is. Once Copilot gives you the updated script, again, just copy and paste it back into the original zombie spawn script. Now to make sure the UI actually responds to that data in real time, we need to use a remote event. In the explorer here, go over to replicated storage and create a new remote event. Name this event wave update. After that, head back to Copilot and copy the given script for the UI. Once you've got that, go to the central game UI element we created earlier and create a new local script. Then paste in the script from Copilot to the new local script. Finally, let's go ahead and clean things up a bit visually. Select the wave number text label and reposition it somewhere more noticeable on the screen. You can adjust the size, the font, text alignment, basically make it look readable so players can easily track what's going on while they're playing. And after all the building, the scripting, and the testing, it's finally time to push the game live. Head on over to the file menu here and choose Publish to Roblox. From there, you'll be prompted to fill in a few details. So like give your game its title, write a quick description, and select the devices you want it to run on. And once that's done, just hit Create and your game will be published for others to find and in play. It's kind of wild how we went from an empty template to a full-on playable game, right? Piece by piece, it all came together. The terrain, the zombies, the guns, the UI, and it all actually works. And that's the cool part. You didn't just follow steps. You built a system that other people can play. Now, if this sparked any ideas or if you ran into any snags along the way, it happens, just drop a comment. I'd love to hear what you're building next or to help you out if something didn't quite click. And if you're ready to try even more, there's plenty more coming. So make sure to stick around. I'll see you in the next one.